bond will be held um, effectively in escrow by the appellate division so that we can lay that case out. And what we asked them to do um, was prevent Miss James and this judge from moving forward with taking assets that we could never get back because the bond was so insane that nobody had ever heard of it, that the largest insurance carriers couldn't do it, wouldn't do it, um, unless you effectively have a billion dollars in cash sitting in your bank, which is poor judgment if you are a wealthy individual. You put that money to work, just like Trump does. So, you know, the $175 million, yeah, it's a lot of money, and it's it's insane that we're even in this situation. However, we had to pay it so that we could be afforded some due process and have them look at what happened in that trial that I sat through for the better of four months. I just don't understand how an appeals court could look at a case where, you know, again, to, to, to restate it, but, I mean, you have the bank that it would allegedly be the victim in a case like this. You know, they're testifying on behalf of former President Trump and saying they do it all over again. Their actuaries looked over his valuations. They said they were fine. How the hell do you not throw something like that out? Right. It's not just that. Also, Rob, we had ridiculous rulings day in, day out. Uh, gag orders. Speaking of the gag order that came out today, yeah. I was gagged. Um, as an attorney officer of the court representing a client, I was gagged in court. Now, that's very different than Alina Habba, spokeswoman, can't go on TV. I was not only not allowed to go on TV, I couldn't speak in court and put things on a record so that I had a record for appeal on certain issues that we felt were very important. So I think cases like this, where, you know, for lack of a better word, the Trump derangement takes over and their judgment as attorneys and judges fails them. Um, they are easier to win on an appeal than others, yeah. but it does take those judges to take off any political animus or bias and apply rule of law and the law to fact. And if they do so, Rob, I really do believe we will get this reversed. That one's ridiculous. The Mershon case, the Alvin Bragg, Stormy Daniels case. I mean, you have a, you have a Biden donating judge. And leading the case is this guy, Matthew Coangelo, who Trump talks about a lot lately, who has worked in Biden's DOJ and with Letitia James. So basically Biden's DOJ, which we know he controls because we know that him and Merrick Garland are boys. They send up this guy to work on these state cases that aren't directly connected to the DOJ. So now everything is kind of under the DOJ's purview in one way or another. They have their people controlling these outside cases. And you know that Merrick Garland is, you know, is on board with the Biden agenda. This he is, is the filthy it, dirty. And, and nobody is watching. And nobody, nobody has a problem with this. Yeah, he's the puppeteer, effectively. And so yeah. is the current president or resident, as I call him, in the White House. He is um, truly, there is obviously a coordinated effort. There's no question about that. If you have a question about that, go pick up uh, Pomerantz's, is, is all his statements and look at them. Right. Back in the day, this case was looked at, it was investigated, it, charges were not brought, indictments were not made because they knew the case was not real. Then he ran for office, they bring the charges. If you look at that time loan, the timeline alone, I want to know how they're going to wipe this story away because it speaks volumes. You didn't bring the charges. You said there was no story. You actually lost people that had left law firms solely to intimidate and corroborate against Trump. And then he runs for office and they bring an indictment on this case. And that, that case that's going forward in April is another disgrace and, and shows the demise of the state of New York, which I used to love. It's yeah. It's disgusting. Just look at the White House logs. If anybody wants to tell me something's not coordinated, explain to me why a state official, why people that are supposed to be elected by their state and working for their state constituents is now working with the White House administration. It makes no sense.